What's going on, Team Nerd Herd fam? Thank you for joining us tonight. We are so excited to have you guys here on the show. Um, and before we get started, uh, let's introduce everybody here on the panel tonight. Uh, JR, what's what's going on? Uh, nothing much. Just uh, enjoying the perils of uh, pillows. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I'm Rogue's Law, your resident asshole. Um, I'm not going to explain that joke. Just never mind. But anyways, uh, I'm here. I'm happy to be here. Um, I'm going to pass it off to Nick. How are you doing, sir? Yo, Seeking what up, deadline. everybody? <clears throat> right? Uh, this is Nick, Firesell Comics. I'm here to see JR in, gla in glasses. I'm all about that right now. <laughs> uh, I'm just glad I made it. Uh, you look amazing, JR. Uh, very sophisticated. Uh, just go ahead and say it. They've already said it. No, you look very sophisticated, man. You like you look like you you, you know things now, you know. <laughs> you know, so uh, yeah, man. I'm just I'm excited. You know, you're collecting expert fire cell comics. Uh, yeah, what's up, Jeff? What's going on? This is Jeff over at Geek Driven. Um, just here to. I'm really excited to be here. I'm really excited to be on the panel with Caroline and Lucy and and Jeremy again, and um, to meet Maureen. Uh, so let's go. Um, Caroline? What's up, everyone? I'm Caroline from Caroline's Comics. Um, really excited to chat with Maureen tonight. I love Silk, as pretty much everyone who follows my Instagram already knows. So uh, let's get this started and kick it over to you. Lucy, what's up? Oh, hey, thank you. So hi, everyone. Hi, Trish. Trish is in the house. <laughs> uh, she's in our comments. Hi. And I'm excited for this. I, I mean, what I just learn and, and you know i think uh, we're gonna be sisters at the end of this <laughs> this show <laughs> uh and, and i'm excited so i mean you're the last one oh wait this way <laughs> <laughs> hi i'm jeremy sparks comics you promised me comics uh really excited to talk with maureen also I've got silk all in the background here um yeah i it's one of my favorite Marvel titles right now. So let's uh, let's kick it back up to Alonzo. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for a lot, Jeremy. Uh, this is Alonzo, a.k.a. Comics and Pops, your pop culture fanatic and comic book nerd. And I have the pleasure of producing our special guest for this evening. Um, she is a highly acclaimed young adult novelist and a producer, in case you guys didn't know, and also of course, the writer of Silk. Um, let us give a big hand for uh, Maureen Gu. Hi. Hi, Maureen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for Welcome. having Welcome. How are things going? Things are good. I truly cannot complain. I'm on <laughs> vacation in Hawaii. I'm feeling <laughs> the most relaxed I felt in two years. Yay. Nice. <laughs> Sounds yeah. delicious. I know the world is on fire around me, but I'm like, I refuse to engage just for this week. Nice, mm -hmm. nice. Uh, so how, how long are you going to be staying in Kauai? Uh, just till Sunday, so it'll be like a week-long vacation. Nice. nice. That sounds awesome. It's, yeah, pretty amazing. All right, so get what we like to do here in the Nerd Herd before we get into our little interview uh, we're going to hit you up with some rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I think so. I'm like, my brain has been turned off for a few days, so let's go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, JR, would you like to kick it off? Um, what type of music do you listen to, to relax? To relax. Good question. I actually do. I listen to a lot of classical music when I really want to relax. Cause then I don't have to pay attention to the lyrics. And it's just kind of like, it sets a mood of like, Definitely. things are organized, life is calm. Unless it's like the classical music that gets all like really rambunctious. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the ones I listen to. <laughs> what you got for it, Nick? Uh, I like your question, JR. Uh, so I'm gonna go a little bit counter to that. I'm gonna do, movies but everyone always asks what's your favorite movie i feel like that's so cliche so what's your least favorite movie genre least favorite like you're like i can't stand these types of movies Ooh. i never want to watch them so i i love all kinds of pop culture because i now that i make my own you know my own 
stories, it's like I have such an appreciation appreciation for all genres of storytelling. The only reason why I don't like these type of movies is because I am a wuss, and that is horror movies. <laughs> Same. I, I wish, Same. Yeah. I wish I like them because I'm like, I bet they're fun and like such a cool, like, especially in a theater, it's such a cool experience. But like, it'll ruin my life if I watch it. Exactly. Like, <laughs> so it's like I can't. <laughs> I agree. I'm the kind of person that runs behind the couch. <laughs> I'll, I'll, yeah, I go in a new another room and I'm like, tell me when the scene is over. Yeah. <laughs> all right, what you got, Jeff? Uh, okay, so with all the nostalgia going around for the last decade or more, um, what would you like to see from your childhood in either a movie or a television series? This is a really good question. What happened was two of them got made already. Uh, ba the Babysitter's Club reboot of the TV mm -hmm. show on Netflix. So those books are the reason why I'm a writer today. Um, my first fandom, my first obsession, my gateway drug into reading, it's like everything. And they came out with that. So that was like, check. Um, the other one, maybe I want someone else to do it again or attempt is Gem. Um, Jim and holograms. Yeah, Ooh, I like that. Nice. I know they came out the new Gem movie, but I didn't watch it, so I'm not going to have any critique on it. But from uh, what I hear, the way they approached it was like not really what people wanted. I mm. hear there's a rumor that they might reboot it. I, they have to. Everything else is getting rebooted. I'm like, you got to do this. Who would you rather it be live or action or animated? Live action. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Does anyone on the panel know what company owns them? Like if they're Mattel or anything? They, I, guess. I think it's Mattel. I think it's yeah. one of those toy companies. Because Mattel, yeah. I know they're creating like their Mattel universe. Oh, so God. You could theoretically get it in that. Um, I, mean, I would love it. I mean, I if it, they do it well. <laughs> right. I'd be excited. All right. Oh, um, should I say Hasbro? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. That makes sense. Oh, Hasbro, okay. Everyone is saying Gambit. Justice for Taylor Kittich. <laughs> All right, Alonzo, what you got? All right, uh, Maureen, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Uh, strength, because I want Ooh. to be able to just be strong and not be vulnerable to dumb, you know, violent people in the world. And know that I could take care of other people if I need to. Nice. All, all right, Lucy, what do you got? Ooh, what's your favorite snack? Okay, this is annoying of me, but I'm not a snacker. I love big, giant meals. However, <laughs> I've been on vacation with like my girlfriends and they're snackers mm -hmm. and they um, bought these Maui sweet onion potato chips. And I think <gasps> all snacks, yes. I I like potato chips the most, and then this flavor potato chip is so amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, yeah, we eat chips a lot in here, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I enjoy <laughs> chips. And, um, Caroline, let's see. Oh, wait, skip German. <laughs> let's see. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 oh, we're going, <laughs> sorry, we're going down, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Top to bottom. <laughs> um, I was gonna ask what any any comic character that exists, whether it be Marvel, DC, Independence. If you could, which one would you want to write? This is a tricky question to write a a comic writer. I don't know. I guess comics. I don't. It's like all secrets and like your intentions can like. <laughs> With ignoring yeah. things that might be right, 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 in the I works. Think, you know, back in the day, I really wanted to write like um, a Mary Jane story. Um, she's not a superhero, but I always wanted her to have like more substance than what she was given in the comics with Spider-Man. Um, but not anymore. I kind of, I mean, I love the X-Men. I think I have made that clear with people. That was like my first real other than Spider-Man, my first real love of comics was through X-Men. Okay. So would be an X person. 
but I don't know. It's like weird. I don't like to say yeah. it because I'm like, well, because then people will say, no, she's gonna, <laughs> she's going to write that next. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one of those things where I'm like, ah, yeah. no, that that works. Yeah, but I do okay. like the Marvel, the Marvel superheroes the most. I have to say, and I'm not just saying that. <laughs> I'm not contractually obligated. No, I'm not. <laughs> not yet, Alicia. I, okay. I agree with you. Yeah. She's like, wink, wink, <laughs> wink to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Caroline. So, who is your favorite Disney princess? This is hard. Oh, <laughs> obvious, actually, now. Moana. Ooh. Okay, she is a princess, so she's, people, she's not because she doesn't wear a dress. She's not in a castle, but she is. That is true. Like, yeah. I support it. Yep. That's a great contract. <laughs> All right, guys. Looks like uh we we are done with the rapid fire questions. So panel, do you guys did how did Maureen do? Did she do okay? <laughs> she 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 made it. <laughs> <laughs> Easy peasy. All right. All right. Um, so uh, before we get into the interview, I just wanted to give a couple of shout outs to people in the chat. Uh, first off, just wanted to say uh, thank you to our Team Nerd Herd moderators, Uncle Rudy, Something Wong, and Deanimate. Thank you guys for always uh, showing up and being there for us. And also thank you to our fellow our resident DJs, DJ Abomination and Plain Clothes D. Thank you guys so much. Mm -hmm. And for those in the chat, uh, Sheena, thank you for joining. Uh, we also have uh, Eric the Phoenix. Uh, let me just see if I can get everybody here real fast. I got, again, HK Wifey. Um, again, also, too, uh, Trish Forstner is also in the chat. Uh, thank you for, for, for dropping by. Um, Eric the Phoenix. Oh, look at that. Jeff is pulling double duty over here. Uh, Glenn2K, thank you so much for, for dropping by. Uh, and, and Sparks, is that you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we got Real Route Six. Thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you. And the list is on and on and on. My goodness. Azores Tiger. Thank you so much for dropping by. And also Comics on the Edge. What is going on? And then finally, comics are great. And then we'll catch everybody else on the way back. And if you guys have a question right now for. Um, for Maureen, please let us know. Go ahead and just put it down in the chat, and we'll just make sure to highlight you and uh, get Maureen to uh, answer it. All right. Uh, so, uh, guys, uh, w any questions for Maureen? Well, we have her here right now. Let's let's start off with uh, Lucy. I know Lucy's a big fan. Uh, Lucy, you have any questions for Maureen in regards to Silk? Well, first, like, I don't know much about Silk, to be honest. Like, I um, I usually, like, read more of, like, independent comics and stuff like that. Do you have, like, uh, I don't know, like, where you do, like, sorry, I know you said Silk. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I apologize. I should but, have said it. just any questions. Like, <laughs> do, you, do you write, like, like an independent comic? Like, do you... Do you, do you Will you be like, uh, 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 do you have plans of writing an independent comic book? Um, you know, I don't have like an active plan to do that, but I, be, I, to be honest, read more graphic novels and independent comics than superhero comics. I probably don't really read superhero comics except my own and like my friends, um, just because I didn't grow up with them. So I think there's a bit of like a, you have to have some fondness for that format and then it, it like hooks you. Um, but I've always read graphic novels and um, my friends, a lot of them, you know, in my twenties, a lot of them are illustrators and comic book um, uh, writers who did independent comics. So I grew up, not grew up. That sounds like one of my twenties, I, I felt like a child to be honest, but like, you know, I was surrounded by a lot of creative people working in that specific genre. So, um, I, I have always thought of writing that. I thought I would do that before writing a comic. You know, I always had this like, oh, one day I want to write a graphic novel. One day I want to do it. You know, I read paper, uh, paper Girls and I was like, this is the coolest shit. Oops, sorry. Am I allowed to say that? Yes, you can. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I cuss all the time. You be you, Maureen. Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. 
sorry, children. Um, <laughs> I've said worse. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I would. So, anyways, long answer for that. Um, yeah, I would. Uh, I think it would be a real fun opportunity. I just don't know, man. I don't know when I would do it. I just was given the silk opportunity before I could even make time for that. Um, and it's really cool with silk because it's just a lot shorter and faster than like doing something like a graphic novel. Um, and it's almost like more instant gratification because you have like an issue come out every month. So, um, uh, yeah, that's the only reason why yeah. like I did a superhero comic first. That's awesome. How did the uh, opportunity come to you? Um, I was, I was contacted by uh, the editor at the time, Jake Thomas. Um, he emailed me out of the blue and I, and it was through like, I don't have it anymore on my website, but like my contact form on my website. So I kind of didn't, I was like, who is this? It was like a <laughs> thing. And I'm like, Mm, okay. Uh, but then I read the email. I'm like, oh, I think maybe this is legitimate because it's a Marvel email address. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, he had he said, hey, I want to awesome. know if you are interested in opportunities in Marvel. It, I had no idea what it was. But I was like, oh, is it a graphic novel? Or, you know, they even do like prose mm -hmm. novels in the Marvel universe. Yeah. So I know a lot of YA authors who do that. So I thought, okay. And yeah, I'd be interested, you know, because I have an interest in Marvel comics and then he said, okay, sign this NDA before I can tell you like what this is about. I was like, God, who, okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, okay, so it really is legit. Yep. I, I sent the NDA to my agent, like, uh, should I sign this? She's like, I guess. I'm like, okay. The first time comics. she's ever seen one of those probably like Yeah, that. cause she doesn't <laughs> usually work with comics. So she was so confused mm -hmm. too, like weird, but you know, it's Marvel. And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I, it's fine. They're not going to like kill me. And so I, then I found out about it and it was a, a easy, happened to be a time in my life when I wanted to take a break from writing novels and I wanted to try new things. And so it was perfect. Nice. Awesome. Um, Maureen, we How have a question from the chat real quickly yes. um, from Kev's Collectibles. He wants to know, um, is there an artist that inspired you to, to write? Um, I wonder if they mean like artist like a literal art artist that somehow inspires me as a creator or like any kind of. I think they mean like creative artist. Creative yeah. artist. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Writer. yeah. Like I mentioned when I was little, I really loved the babysitters club. So Anna Martin was my earliest influence, but I grew up. I mean, I read so many, it's like so hard for me to say, but there was a point in my adult life when I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I graduated college and I was like, I have communication degree and no life skills. And so I wanted to work at a bookstore because I'm like, all I want to do is read books. And um, I discovered David Sedaris's writing and it immediately like made me want to be a, a writer. Um, I had always written, but like kind of took a, you know, didn't really take it seriously. And then I read his, his essays and was like, oh yeah, no, I want to do this. And then I also read The Princess Diaries when I was trying to figure out what kind of children's writing I wanted to do and I was like oh that's I want to write young adult novels like this that are like funny um so those are like some pivot points you know where like writers directly influenced um uh what I wanted to do that's pretty cool that's awesome <laughs> um we also have one more comment or question in the chat before we get to Nick um if you could create a superhero character you would love to write about what power would they have and how would it be unique? Man, Ooh. this is That's interesting. Awesome. I've talked about this because I, I have, I wanted to think about like, do I want to create my own superhero, you know, and pitch that. Um, so it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm not going to talk about the real idea, but um, I <laughs> think you know, I'm going to be vague, but like, I would definitely still, I want to write a Korean American superhero. Cause it's like, uh, there could be a lot more written and it wouldn't be too much. Um, mm -hmm. I would make her a woman probably just because of, you know, there could be more women. Um, I want to, so my, okay, I have a short coming out in the uh, Marvel Identities. Um, Ooh, uh, nice. that's coming out. Yeah, there's a silk short in there. Um, and I touch on this with this issue. I'm going to give you guys a little hint. Nobody else knows, but it's, deals a lot with like anger 
So um, I would love to have some kind of superhero mm -hmm. thing that has to do with anger and how that could be a power used for good. Oh, um, you know, because women are to women are told to like not be angry. Um, mm -hmm. Asian Americans are told not to be angry. Just to, like keep your head down, be good. So I think there's something interesting you could do in that vein. I know that like Hulk is kind of, you know, the original Hulk is kind of like that. And then there's Amadeus. So there's a lot of kind of like overlap with my ideas with other comics that exist. So I have to like think a little harder, harder well, about see, it. Well, see, this could be an independent comic book that you can take yeah. it, the idea to yeah. either boom, Art. image, or one of those in the independent yeah. uh, publisher. And, and I'm sure a, you can make this. <laughs> no, I love you. Keep your like, Marvel so they can team up sounds, with Silk. <laughs> it sounds like last time you mentioned, is it Han? Yeah. Like uh -huh. the, you mentioned, because you were talking about last time we interviewed you about mm -hmm. Omnius Cho and channeling his inner Han. Mm -hmm. So is it going to be kind of in that spirit or just kind of nix that? It could be for sure. Mm -hmm. But um, you guys should wait for this little short comic to come out. <laughs> oh, I, I think that might be a pick of the week coming up for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, All right, Nick, you had a uh, go ahead, yeah. fire away. Well, uh, you know, um, you know, writing comics is different than writing, you know, novels. Yes. It's like, not completely different, but it's vastly different. No, comics are more akin to, like, a screenplay. How did you feel making that, like, that change in, like, writing scene descriptions as well as, like, bubbles, you know, like text bubbles. Yeah. Um, I loved it because it's so much less work. <laughs> like, oh, okay. I can describe this scene in a way that is super casual that only the artists and editors are going to read. And then I just have to focus on dialogue. Um, that's like the literal writing, right? But obviously you do have to think of the plot. You have to do the same amount of work as far as like, what's the story going to be? You know, really, and that's the thing that was difficult for me. I was like, my YA novels are very like they're realistic contemporary novels about like teenage girls living in California. Very like a world that I understand. With comics, it's like okay, I gotta like notch, bring up my imagination up like ten billion notches, and like think in comic superhero terms, and so. I realized I had a lot of that knowledge anyways, because I just, you know, I read comics, I watch all these, all the Marvel movies and all the other superhero movies. So I have a shorthand for all of that because I'm sure you guys too, obviously you guys would be like experts, but there's something that when you're exposed to all that, you kind of like, you're like, Oh, I kind of know how to do this. Um, however, I didn't make my stories that fun. I don't think. And so my editors came in like, okay, how about your villain instead of this, whatever boring thing I thought of, like, they could have us, have you thought of them having like a superpower too? And I'm like, oh, duh. Like I can go, the sky is the limit with like these comics. Um, so I had a lot of help in like them helping me make it like a fun, big superhero story. And then I think my strength was, okay, I focus on the characters. Like what is Silk's journey in this? What is interesting about her um, interaction with this villain? What's this villain's backstory? Like that's kind of like my what I like to do. Um, but then I had so much fun. I'd be like, and then his brain exploded in the cave. Cool. You know, I was like, what? Is, I never get to write stuff like this. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it, it, the, as far as format, um, the format is just, it's a little like difficult to get used to at first. And then it's, you just figure it out um, as you do it. And if you read a couple of, if you read a few comic scripts, you're like, oh, okay, I think I, I know how to do this. I'm sure I had a ton, my editors were like, you need to, you know, like they've probably changed a lot of things to help me, but um, mm -hmm. I I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was too hard to change. That's awesome. With switching between them, did you change anything in your routine? Like if you had a routine for getting ready to write books versus when you're doing the mm -hmm. comics, did you do anything different? Yeah, because, you know, comics, um, I don't need to be so, like, focused, to be honest. Like, it's almost like, um, I mean, I do, but 
the level of focus it takes for writing a book is like you have for me like i have to like clear my space my head like know that i have endless hours ahead of me with a comic it's like oh i have 30 minutes to work on this i could bang out a page really quickly so it was a little more casual but it's the same amount of like you know it's just sitting at a computer and doing the work and so i always have to have soundtracks when i write um and the best was writing comics i'm like Ooh, so I like went into all the old the comics movies and played all the soundtracks. Um, and I also wrote a lot of this to the Stranger Things soundtrack, even though Stranger Things is not a comic and totally different vibes from this. But um, that was a soundtrack that like for some reason really got me in like a kind of like a supernatural headspace. Nice. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I, I wrote a book and I used a lot of Dragon Ball Z Theme music oh yeah my yeah theme awesome. music because yeah. you feel like you're like in it you're like yes like it kind of like makes you feel it's like a cheating thing element where you feel like your writing is really good but really it's the music <laughs> yeah it, it must have been different though you know like when you're writing a novel it's like you're you're thinking unless you, you get adapted into a movie like when you're just going to become a netflix film like your stuff gets adapted almost immediately into a visual form like, yeah. you know, layout, did you, did you, were you involved in like the layouts, the pencils and the, that whole process? Or do you just see it when it's colored and you're like, wow, that looks amazing. I didn't imagine it that way. Or do you kind of like say, hey, I imagine this more like this. Can you change this, et cetera? Um, for me, I was involved every step of the way. So it'd be like, um, TAC would send everybody on the team the uh, layouts first and then, um, then he would send the inks and then he would send, and then Ian hearing would send colors. And then the, they'd be like, Hey Marine, look at the script again for lettering. I'm like, cool. looks good. Or I make edits. And then, then I look at the lettering final. That's my final look at everything. However, I did not have many notes cause tack always made everything look so good. Um, you know, nothing's usually like, I don't know if this is like just because I'm like a beginner, but I would just look at his layouts and inks like, like I'm reading a comic, like, ooh, fun. like, you know, I'm just like looking at it like, this is fun. <laughs> and I cut, I'm like, yeah, that's what I imagined. That's what I imagined pretty much. Um, he also just kind of like really, I, I don't think I noticed much discrepancy. Like he really just made the scenes look like how I, um, how I said it in the, you know, and a lot of times with action scenes, especially, I'd be like, something cool is happening. I don't know, Tack, like Tack can like figure out this fight sequence because I truly don't have the imagination for this. Um, mm -hmm. Or I'll say like, he punched him and it's like so boring, you know? So I'm like, you'll think of something better. And so then he would like surprise me. Um, but yeah, honestly, I did not have many notes. The editors had like way more notes like, oh, actually, can you make um, Silk uh, look more angry in this shot or in this panel or, um, move this text bubble to this panel, consolidate this, you know, um, they had a lot more notes like that. Every once in a while, I would have a note and it was always something like, uh, can we change Silk's outfit? <laughs> you know, <laughs> or like, I, Cindy's jacket should look like this. And they're like, okay, whatever. Totally not important. That stuff's important. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I have, very, I have very strong feelings about She's Cindy's worker. look. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then we also have a, a quick question from the chat, and it's just a great uh, kind of uh, question. Uh, since we're talking about art, it's like, uh, what is your favorite cover from Silk of the series so far? And he, uh, Geek Out Roscoe, likes the Rose uh, Besh one, which is uh, this one right here. Oh, that was so cool. Okay. That's beautiful. I wish I had like a better grasp of all the variant covers out there because. The way that I find out is always like somebody tags me in something on Twitter or Instagram. I'm like, oh, cool. I just didn't know this existed. Like there must, I know there's a schedule, but comics work so fast that they're not going to be like, oh, Maureen, here's everything. Um, I kind of, so I love the variants a lot, um, but I'm going to pick one from like the main covers just to make simplify it for myself. Um, I really like the third issue, the one with Saya and uh, Silk on the cover. And shoot, oh my God, I feel terrible for not remembering the name of the artist. Yes, I just love it. It's so cool. It's a cool cover. It's yeah. a great oh, look at that. Jeremy, it's a beautiful. Came prepared. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
Nice. Part, of me, part of me was like, and there's an ass shot of Persia, but whatever. Like she has a good life. <laughs> she would have a good butt. She's an influencer. She's, she's doing Pilates or whatever. So fine. Um, but yeah, I just like that dynamic of them too. And their, you know, rivalry is like the part of this series. So. So I'm oh, curious, would you wait. ever do a sci-fi book? Like a Star Trek, Star Wars? It doesn't even have to be a major franchise. Just Yeah, I would... Normally, I don't say no to things. But in this case, I would say no only because I love reading that stuff and watching it. I do not have that brain. So I am on vacation with my friend um, who is a sci-fi writer. And like when she talks about her stuff, I'm like... Like so much thinking that is just not like how my brain works. Um, and I think like I respect that genre a lot. So I don't want to like attempt my like watered down weird like version that would not make sense. Um, maybe, but I kind of know myself. Like the one genre I'm, I'm like, oh, I could maybe attempt to write like a, something with like um, supernatural elements or like a thriller, a mystery, even a horror. I know I hate horror movies, but I probably could write a good horror because my imagination's insane with that stuff. But sci-fi to me is like, it takes a different way of like viewing humanity, the world, and then like having an interest in all the really, the minutia of like right. world building sci-fi. And I don't have that in me. You ever thought about doing a Western? That's so funny because I'm reading Lonesome Dove right now, which is like amazing. And it's like the OG Western book. I would love to actually, that'd be amazing. This Chinese American, I think she's Chinese American author came out with a book early in the pandemic called The Hills Are Made of Gold, I think. And I haven't finished reading it, but it's um, about a pair of Chinese American siblings back in the gold rush. And it's like their dad dies and they have to traverse, like get to some treasure or something by themselves. And it's like really dark, really messed up, really gritty. But I remember thinking like, oh yeah, you there were Asian people back then. Like I would love to try to like find that point of view. Um, yeah, I love Westerns. I appreciate that genre, but I'd have to like really do research on that. And I'm a little bit like, eh, do I want to? <laughs> That's awesome, man. I'll have to check out that book. Pills are made of gold. Yeah, something like that. I will, I can confirm the title. Sorry, I feel bad. I I don't remember things anymore. <laughs> I recently have just become enamored with Westerns. It just, yeah. I don't know. Oh, so great. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. So when it comes, oh, I don't want to spoil anything for the book, so I'm going to be a little vague. Okay. Um, so when it comes to like the villains for the book, um, do you get the choice of picking them or is it like Marvel suggests certain villains? And if you did get to pick them, like what are the reasons that you pick the certain villains that you have? That I love this question. Um, I actually got to pick the villains. This Marvel gave me so much. Um, they let me, they basically said, here are the two things that you have to include. She has to work at this place called Threats and Menaces for Jonah as a reporter and then at night like her night job is silk but also being jonah's bodyguard everything else like make what up whatever you want for this for this five series arc and i was like okay so i pitched the particular story i have and i had saya was always in there so i made up saya completely she has not like existed in the marvel universe but her dad silvermane is um an old character and so people like that, like um, Silvermane and Kasha, um, I I had stand-in characters for them. And then I, I was like, I would say some, some like m mob guy from old Marvel comics, I don't know who. And then my editors are like, here are some good options, you know? I also made like an insane spreadsheet of all the Marvel villains I found on the on their wiki. And I made like a spreadsheet and I, then organize it into like, okay, what are their powers? Which comics, who is their biggest foe? What era, blah, blah, blah. So then I, and then I knew like their powers too. So I wanted to match up to like my needs for the story. Um, and so Kasha was 
I thought, oh, just some sort of demon, but it'd be cool if it was a Japanese demon because Saya is from Japan. And so they're like, perfect, Kasha. And I was like, a cat demon? Yes, because I love cats so much. Um, and so, yeah, it was kind of like a process like that of like, and then they would tell me, ah, you can't use that guy because he's going to be in like this other storyline. And I was like, God damn it. <laughs> um, so then I had to change, you know, like there were like quite a few people in my comic that I had to change because they were saved for other, um, and you know, the movies are also like, kind of like hogging Touchy. up all the characters. Right. So you're like, ah, I can't do this because potentially they might be like in these, one of these phase four insane movies. Ooh, don't give that away. <laughs> well, I, I truly have no information, so I can't give away any information. Um. So, yeah, that's that's kind of how it was, but it was really cool because I didn't know they would let me make up a villain, and they did. Uh, so Silver remains a so cool happy. throwback. So that's really yeah. Awesome. yeah. When she mentioned my father's head in, you know, separated or in in a bottle, yeah. I was like, oh, I know she's talking about. Like immediately, like it popped oh, in my it? head because oh, wow. it just it just because I the only villain I can think of that had their head disconnected from them basically is Silvermane. Like you can yeah. see him, his whole body is just a metal, right? So yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe that it actually worked out. And maybe it might've been, I might've read an FOC, so I might've connected it, but okay. I, that's what I thought of first. So oh. I was like, I was like, yes, this book is awesome. <laughs> so oh, I you know what? I wanted, to, I wanted to kind of go back to the other part of your question, which is like, why did I choose the villains that I chose? Yes. Um, and I am going to be very honest, I was kind of nervous about picking Saya because she's Japanese American or half Japanese. She's not actually American. She's half Japanese, half white. And then Silvermane is obviously her, her dad. Um, I was kind of like, okay, do I want to make like the other villain Asian? But then I was like, yeah, because that's awesome. Because I don't have to just write one Asian character and I don't have to have every Asian person is like, they're the best person. It's like they're they're complicated like all other human beings. You're able to see, you know, within all art, within all um, comics, all these white people getting to be every kind of white person, right? So right. I was like, I want the villain to be like a fellow Asian American woman. So it's, or not Asian American, but Asian woman. And like, she's gonna be complicated as hell. I'm gonna give her that complexity and um, not make her like a flat bad guy. And so, that's kind of why I was like, yeah, I want her to be Asian and I want there to be this whole, and I picked Japan because Japan in the eighties, there was like so much comic stuff like that dealt with, you know, Japan was like this like karate, like, you know, people were kind of obsessed with Japan in the eighties. So I thought it'd be kind of like a good reason for Silvermane to go travel there and then like have this affair. That was awesome. So cool. Yeah. <laughs> so somebody asked uh, uh, if you read the Good Asian from Image Comics. I haven't. I've been picking that up. I haven't read it yet, but I know David Cho is going to do a cover for that one, and I'm so Ooh. excited for that. <laughs> wow, really? That's so cool. It's a noir uh, story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. so much cool stuff coming out now. It's really exciting. So many books. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, we are going to start the verses. Are, are are you ready, Maureen? Yes, I think. <laughs> All right. All right. So this is uh, amazing. This is our verses, and it's derived from our good friends Kong and Godzilla. So that's where we drew inspiration for this. So uh, here we go. Um, all right, so for you, which one would be an easier write? Uh, would it be novels or a comic book? Easier for me to write? Yes. Okay, I think, I mean, just the sheer amount of hours and time, it would be comics. All right, and then next, okay, so Ugh. I think everybody knows <laughs> that Spider-Man <laughs> is your favorite character. Even I think even JR knows. Um, <laughs> Uh -huh. Who was a better girlfriend? Was it Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy? Gwen. And, she's and more why? Challenging. Wow. And she's more, you know, Mary Jane, 
I mean, just look at Mary Jane's pose right there. You know, it's like, <sighs> <laughs> I like, she's, she could be, she could be more complex. I don't think she was given enough complexity. That's, that's also Campbell. He just, yeah. Campbell does that. <laughs> I mean, she looks great, but like, you know. She's, kind of, she's saying, come and get me. And the other one's like, what are you looking at? Yeah, exactly. So that's, <laughs> I'm always drawn to that, the bit of more attitude, you know? I like it. <laughs> All right. Um, also, with with Rogue, um, in, in your head, um, who embodied Rogue uh, the best? Is it uh, Rogue from the movies um, or Rogue from the animated series mm -hmm. back in the 90s? Okay. This is hard because I actually really liked Anna Paquin's Rogue, but I don't think she was the yes. real Rogue. The oh, yeah. Thank you. The real Rogue. <laughs> But Anna did a good job. I, right. I mean, I, I, I like the super-powered cartoon Rogue better. I thought she was yes. more like comic book. Yes. Game, I felt. Yes. yes. I like, like her voice. Angsty. Her voice, yeah, her accent. Is... Yeah. 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 Anna Paquin, I don't know. She's like British, and she constantly gets made to do Southern accents. I'm like, what's this is true. Like True Blood? <laughs> yes, True yeah. Blood. What I love. I love that show. Yeah, me too. <laughs> oh, even even the chat's doing the same thing. They're like animated all day. That's great. Yes. 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 I don't like the worst animated picture of her too. I'm like, what is yeah. this? I was like, what is <laughs> this <laughs> picture, bro? I'm like, is this fan art? What is this? I don't remember being that bad. <laughs> this, is, this is the 90s. Come on. It's <laughs> not sorry, bro. It doesn't get that that copyrighted. Bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's also the hair, too. Anna Paquin's hair was never right. No. Rogue's yeah. hair was yeah. like fabulous and huge because she's Southern. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have volume in that hair. Not yeah. at all. Yes. There's not yeah. enough Shugs either. <laughs> I, I, needed, I needed people, I needed her to call people <laughs> Shugs more often. Okay. I'm dying at this next one. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> Uh, Rescue Rangers was your favorite cartoon back in the 80s slash 90s. Um, Chip or Dale and why? Okay, here's the thing. Have you guys seen the meme that shows these two next two photos of Indiana Jones and, and Magnum P.I.? Yes. yes. And they're like, how did we never notice this? So <laughs> it influenced me because I, oh, you did? I never did. I never put two and two together. I love Indiana Jones, right? But on the show, the enjoyment came from Dale. Hell yeah. The yes. Group, he really kept things enjoyable. Yes. I didn't know what he was going to do next. I agree with you. Yes. yes. He's like the lovable loser. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if he's a loser. Yeah, no, no, but, no. but he was clumsy. I kind of assumed he was drunk, like as I got older. <laughs> nose is red. Oh, gosh. Yeah, he might be right. And like, hooded eyes, like he looks a little tired. <laughs> right. yeah. I was just going okay. to say, he's I was gonna say it's kind of like me. He's true. He's probably Maybe stoned. stoned. You're, you're, I, I, you're I like killing my more. childhood here. <laughs> I, know. I love his aloha energy with that Hawaii shirt, you know? Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> oh, I, see, no, I see a drunk tail. <laughs> oh, you know what? Now I'm seeing a drunk tail. It's shame on you, Jeff. He's got my ties, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but does anyone else like want to see, like Owen Wilson play Chip or play Dale? Dad, like, I can yes. just yes. see that. Yes. Oh my God. Oh, they are yes. the live action Rescue Rangers. We're like, we're going to reboot everything, including these chipmunks. I know. <laughs> and I think you can't include Gadget in here because it, it, she wins hands down. No, she's she, the best yes. character. Her overall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next up, uh, since you've been watching Loki. Oh, uh, yes. Did you um, like the alligator variant? Um, or the Throg, or Thor as a frog? This is a bit of unfair question because I have no exposure to Throg. Oh, no. <laughs> Although the name, in the show. the name is, a, he is? Do we, Don't did you see the whole show? Did you see the whole show? For like four seconds, guys. Oh, it's not ruining yeah. the show. 
Um, she saw the alligator, she saw him. I love the punny nature of a throg, <laughs> but I loved Loki so much. And the alligator Loki was just like, what's happening? It's the best <laughs> thing ever. And he bit off other the president Loki's hand. Amazing. <laughs> So many yeah. questions. I mean, he gets his own poster. Amazing. Yeah. This I love like dialogue. Look at the dialogue when he saw the alligator. He was just that was just amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the timeline he's from is yes. everyone an alligator or did just <laughs> yes, Anthony no, Hopkins just adopt an alligator? Just to, <laughs> that's my canon. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a very good question. <laughs> he ate the wrong neighbor's cat. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, wow. That's funny. All right. Um, and then you are a big fan of Ted Lasso. And I mean, it's a great show on Apple TV. Um, and Jason Sudeikis is just amazing in it. Uh, which and I know it's a lot to read. Oh, okay. Which uh, which saying is your favorite? And he has a lot because he does. He says like the most offbeat type of things throughout the entire show. Yeah. Um, so which one would be your favorite? Is it the memory of a goldfish? Is it being alone? Is it about youth? Yeah. Or about riding a horse. I love the horse one, to be honest, because it's so like, what? <laughs> but then you're like, okay, actually, you're not wrong. Which is, I think, the whole embodiment of Ted Lasso's character. You're like, what? And then you're like, but somehow he's right. Kind of reminds me of Michael Scott. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Things. These are smarter Dwightisms. Yes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. And and just for you guys that don't know, you haven't watched Ted Lasso, he coached American football for a college team um, and had one winning season. And then he was um, essentially given the job to coach a soccer team, uh, a professional soccer team out in, in Europe. And so now he's the coach and he has does not have any knowledge at all about soccer. I mean, it's a great show. So yeah, can I that's, ask the, that's what he's referring to on taking on a challenge. That's the challenge. <laughs> did he know? Did he think it was football though when he took it, or did he? No, know no, no. Okay. Two. And, uh, That'd be funnier. He had some personal reasons for taking it. You know, I watched the first couple episodes of that show, and then I thought, you know, like, oh, I'm too smart. I figured this out. This is major league made into a TV show, but with soccer. And then I watched the, the rest of the season, and I was wrong. I was extremely wrong. This is a wonderful show. It's really heartfelt. I yeah. thought there was going to be evil vipers all around him. Mm -hmm. and it turned yeah. out not to be the case. Yeah. Instead, communication is the key. <laughs> That's literally what the show is about. It's really mm -hmm. an empathy. It's really it's very lovely. And I've really good and fun, too. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a feel-good show, and it's only 30 minutes. I mean, it's perfect. bite size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm, I like to, you an Emmy? to watch it. Yeah, well, they're all nominated for Emmys. Like this show just swept all the um, Emmy nominations. Oh wow, yeah. nice! Yeah. Definitely have to check it out. Apple yeah. TV is making a case for your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and then Sound of Music, and I know we are a, a lot of us are fans of this movie. I mean, it Julie Andrews, yeah. unbelievable oh, queen. So. Mm -hmm. Which which song is your favorite, and and why? And maybe you could sing a little bit. Oh my god! <laughs> um, well, you don't have, you don't have the performance of the song I love, which is um, "Doa Deer," because I wouldn't have picked that. But now I have a baby. I have sung this song to him so many effing times, hmm? and it is the, it is like no matter what age, from when he was a newborn to now, he's like eleven months it will calm him down and make him stop and stare at me. Wow. So I have such a soft spot for that song. And that song is also easy to sing compared to like all of these other songs. So <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I do like it. And I shall not ruin your eardrums and sing it. Okay. It's, it's the, the, the doe a deer, a female deer. That, that's the one, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, any anybody else here on the panel like have a have a favorite? I haven't watched this movie. I have the movie. I bought the movie a long time ago, and I still haven't watched it. I I will watch it. I promise. <laughs> you should watch it um, with kids because it's like so fun for kids. Okay, it's a I'll wonderful watch it with my kids. movie. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll watch it for sure. This is one of my favorite things. I mean, it's oh, just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's a dad joke. Come on. It's a dad joke. I, 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 I can okay. do these. I can do these. I, I think I watched this when I was like six or seven. Like, uh, oh, one of my great, uh, great aunts like was babysitting me and, and rented it and. It was this and I believe um, Oliver Twist. So oh. I watched both of them in the same night. And goodness, that's when I fell in love with movies. Oh, um, me too, I think. The Sound of Music was like my first favorite movie. I watched it on like a cassette like a million times. Mm -hmm. huh. <laughs> you know, maybe I might have watched it when I was little and I don't remember because I know like some scenes they kind of like sound like, uh, um, I've seen like, you know, pictures. And they kind of look for or maybe just from the pictures. I don't know, but I, I definitely need to watch this. <laughs> yeah. Still, still a great rewatch. It's a very good movie. I'll watch it with my kids for sure. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, Lauren. I know. Oh, All right. Um, so. In, in case people don't know, and, and, and Maureen, you can probably get into this a little bit more. Your husband directed and wrote uh, the movie Wish Dragon for Netflix. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, which upcoming movie from, <laughs> from your husband are you more excited to more excited about? Is it the K-pop Demon Hunters or Wish Dragon 2? Okay, you can't make me choose this one. Because they're his words. I had a knee jerk reaction to K pop <laughs> demon hunters. I'm like, yes. Yes, yeah. right? <laughs> yes. I, I love the K pop. K -pop. <laughs> we love K pop. Oh, you do? Yeah. It's I'm a sucker with so anything fun. dragons. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so cool. And then Wish Dragon 2, I actually. Um, God, I'm like, am I, I don't even know if people know, but like what I know about the story in Wish Dragon 2, I love it so much. Um, I'm really biased in both, in the, both these pieces. Um, so I'm just going to say it is a draw. That's a good, Smart fair, choice. that's fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> okay. I have a, I have a question though. For Wish Dragon, is Bobby Lee coming back for that one? I have no idea. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. I love Bobby <laughs> Lee. So. Wait, Bobby Lee voices the in Wish Dragon? Yeah. Yeah, he's one of the little like little goons, the bad guys. Um oh God, I have to watch the little the, the short the little short guy. Um yeah. and he's you know, Chris, my husband said he's like the nicest guy. Oh so, yes. so like his, his persona is kind of crazy. Yes. Um, but he's actually just very like I mean, Chris had a good time with everybody, but he said Bobby was so respectful and like oh. nice and just like the calmest dude. <laughs> wait, oh my wait till you God, get to know him. So wait till you get to know him. <laughs> um, I I listen to me and my husband. We listen to his podcast. I listen to his. He has two podcasts, and I listen to both of them. And yes. I, I just love him and his girlfriend Kalila. So um, I was so excited when I yeah, <laughs> like he was in a small it. Small part in it. Yeah, it's a shame because like so much of the casting happened kind of like after the movie was written, and so mm -hmm. you know Chris would have loved to give Bobby like a funnier, you know, more ring mm -hmm. to like do his own thing. But like the script animation, you can't. You can't um, improvise, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It's, they're already animating this. We've got to do mm -hmm. it this way. So, um, awesome. yeah, there's a lot of really funny people in this movie, and mm -hmm. um, it would yeah, have been so many comedians. It's, I love it. <laughs> a lot of comedians. So, mm -hmm. we'll see. Yeah. yeah we're, awesome. we're actually talking about this um, in the back room. Um, Lucy had mentioned uh, that she's like, "Oh my God, that's right. Jackie Chan was in this movie." He's the the production, right? Part of the production in China. Yeah. So he, yeah, he um he produced this, and he um 
is the voice of the dragon in the Mandarin version. Oh, so no way. The Mandarin version, and then there's the English version. Mm -hmm. So um, Jackie did the Long's voice. Oh my God, now I have to watch it in Mandarin then, because yeah. <laughs> again, like I, we love Jackie Chan. My husband loves Jackie He's Chan, the best. so we have to we have we have to watch it then. And yeah, also, and you know, Mandarin is not it's Cantonese mainly, so he had to like really work to do the Mandarin voice. Oh wow, that's awesome! Oh, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> now we have to watch it again because we watched it a couple times already. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. I want to read the K-pop Demon Hunters manga. Like, oh, I, just, I bet. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if something came out. You know, that image yeah. is just awesome. It just, yeah. They're yeah. performing yeah. on stage, and there's this giant multi-eyed demon coming in. All right. He was so, hooked by that comic. <laughs> demon K-pop. I'm telling you, my husband, we, I was just telling them before we started it, we love K-pop and I'm like showing my husband the poster right there because <laughs> we listen to, uh, I mean, most, whatever we listen, it's all K-pop. <laughs> so, oh yeah, you'll have, to, you'll have to see this. That's awesome. I can't wait. And uh, kind of speaking about K-pop, <laughs> uh, we, we have the, the, the boys of BTS here. Uh, Maureen, who, who's your favorite and why? <laughs> it's V, who is right there on the bottom left. Um, yeah, yeah, right there. Thank I you love for pointing that out because I have no idea who any of them were. Yeah, V, he's got so much sass. Um, and he is like, he's like the smallest one, I think, in the group, but has such big energy he is a really great dancer obviously he's cute um <laughs> i love him and right now he currently has a perm for no ex reason <laughs> they're all so pretty aren't they all of them. okay they're all yes, pretty they're and all pretty they're what, what, boys yeah, what other uh k-pop band do you like um, I also really like Blackpink and Red Velvet. Yes, Red Velvet. Ooh, huh? Red Velvet girl. Love I, I love EXO. <laughs> um, EXO and um, Mama Moo. I don't really like other boy bands as much as BTS. So I listen really? to mostly the girl bands and then BTS. Oh, well, me and Trish from Stray Dog. Look at her. <laughs> We were, we've been oh talking. God. I was just when they show me this, I, we've been talking about K pop all day today because she just found out that I love K pop. <laughs> and we've been sharing, like, I sent her my playlist and telling her about Jackson <laughs> Wang and, and God Seven. I'm like, you have to listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast love contains multitudes, you guys. Mm, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like I shine. Yeah, there's yeah, there's, there's so many so many bands out there that a lot of people don't know because K-pop is kind of new in the states, you know. Yeah. So me and her were being sharing. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you guys like it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my kids, I don't think he, my my son especially, uh, I don't think he knows. Uh, but all he knows is K-pop, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. My son um, was born on the day that Dynamite came out, and uh -huh. so that song is burned into his memory, my I'm sure. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. He's going to have like a Pavlovian response when he's an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we've been uh, like we found BTS. Well, my husband found it. My husband's the one who always finds the music. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, BTS found 2017, and that's when my son was born. 2017. Oh. So that's all he He's knows. Been, yeah, <laughs> before, yeah. Before BTS, it was Big Bang. That's what oh, Big Bang. When yeah. I, when I met him, uh, like around 2011, that's when I started listening yeah. a little bit but not till like 2017 is when i got like super into k-pop welcome. welcome yeah <laughs> thanks <laughs> right, sorry i'm so taking over no 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 worries <laughs> this is great uh, okay maureen we know that yeah. you're a lover of food um so we're gonna have to we're gonna make you pick and i know we spent oh, no. like half an hour last time talking about tacos 
but would like to know if you you had to pick one, would it be Korean barbecue or or tacos? You're cold, Alonzo. Don't this break our a, hearts. Oh no. A horrible question. Um I agree. Except I know my answer. And it's not just because I'm Korean, but maybe it is. But it is definitely Korean barbecue. <laughs> oh. well, you, you, you know what? I, JR died a little bit. Oh <laughs> no. Sorry, JR. <laughs> Here's why. Because Korean barbecue has like so many other like a billion little things. So you know yeah. so many choices. Tacos, I mean, tacos yeah. are a perfect food. But you could put Korean barbecue in tacos. Oh oh. Yes, you yep. can do that. I that was the correct cool. answer. <laughs> that was answer. <laughs> you know, I'm Mexican and I will go for Korean barbecue too. I think that's my favorite. Uh so so I agree with you. I mean oh. <laughs> it's, 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 it's close, it's close, you know, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah especially right Korean. now, you can't have Korean barbecue. Oh, no, no, oh so Korean. good. I mean, not like the way that you know, sitting yeah. down and making yeah. nope. cooking and everything. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Hopefully soon. I mean, I did it a couple times when, you know, everyone was vaccinated and things were going okay. I went out for Korean barbecue a few times. So, oh, oh, well, I don't know if you heard, because you're in California too, right, Maureen? Yeah. Did you hear they're, we're all masking up? I mean, I know LA was anyway, but every, the whole state's masking up again. Again. I'm, I'm not surprised. Yeah. 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 Not surprised. Ooh, the cheesy corn. Hell yeah. I spent all this money yep. on these comic book masks, so I might as well wear them. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> That's well, true. I mean, you know, I think it's going to ebb and flow like this for a while, so we just have to kind of be flexible. Yeah. Yep. Where in, in California are you at? In our app? Um, I am from LA and that's where I'm living right now. Oh, okay. Wait, then you have, I don't know if you have tried this place. What's the name of the place we went by when we went to Long Beach? Tentorin? Oh, Tentorin. What's it uh, called? Paul Said. Paul Said. Oh, no. Oh, I don't my Tentorin. God, it's so good. Mm -hmm. If you have to try. They cook, it's mostly, they, they, um, they focus more, mostly on, uh, what is it called? Um, pork belly. Oh, yeah. mm. and, well, I have beef too, yeah. But they, they and they bring you a rag, and then they just cook it for you. The and then they give you a, a like a soup, a ramen. So mm. eh, and then they're they're oh my god, it's so good. You have to go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's in Torrance. Yeah. So. Yep. You have me. to try. It. So good. I <laughs> Sorry, guys. At the end of this, Alonzo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did it at the start. We wouldn't have got through the rest of it. Yes. I know. I know. I know. Okay. Um, so, Maureen, this is just kind of for everybody. Uh, if you could go back to any time in any place, um, which writer would you sit down and visit and chat with, and why? Wow. <laughs> Okay, uh, I have to say like a big influence for me as like a reader and as a woman and um, I, you know, I used to study literature a lot. So I took so many, I read so many books by men and the only author, woman author that was taken seriously like male authors was Jane Austen. So I would love to have ch chatted with Jane Austen. She seemed like an interesting lady, you know, in her life. I'm like, what was it like to be like the one woman writing popular fiction during this time? Um, nice. It's a lot of responsibility. And also she, she everything, every rom-com in the world is originally like a Jane Austen. Like she created that genre, essentially. Nice. Um, uh, Caroline, what about you? What is? What are your thoughts on this? So I would go with Terry Pratchett. Um, mm -hmm. Small Gods is like one of my favorite books. So I would just want to like sit down and talk with him about that. Nice. Um, Sparks or Jeremy? Uh, I think I, I'll go with one of my, my favorite series I read that's a fantasy series, Wheel of Time, um, Robert Jordan. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, Lucy? Oh my God. Well, I mean, she's not a writer she's i guess more of an artist uh but trina robbins she um uh, uh was the first uh woman to to draw a uh, wonder woman 
in, in comics. So probably her, and then she also helped uh, des design the the Vampirella um, uh, outfit. So I think I would like to talk to her, ask questions. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, what about you, Jeff? Um, even though I've already met him, I would love to have met him when he first created his characters, Stanley. When he was first writing his Spider-Man, his X-Men, what was he thinking? I want to ask him those questions like, you know, how, how is he going to relate when he knows that his life is different from what he's writing about? Nice. Uh, what about you, Nick? Okay, so I'm going back in time in like a Doctor Who style thing, right? Okay, <laughs> so I, I, I'm going to pick the most obvious just because I want to blow his mind and just get his reaction. Because also, I'm half black, so I'm really scared of a lot of racist writers out there. So I wouldn't want to visit like, you know, the Twains. Mark Twain? The, the Twains and that kind of stuff, <laughs> right? But like, William Shakespeare, I want to go back in time and blow his mind and just go, hey, you know you're going to be the most influential writer in the in the history of writing and just see his reaction and probably not understand what he says because i think he's like i don't know maybe french or something i don't know but uh uh yeah i, I think that would be kind of cool just kind of be doctor who I, i'm more into the fact that like blowing someone's mind you know as opposed to like satisfying my own satisfaction like i said it's my satisfaction of seeing someone be freaked out so yeah <laughs> <laughs> what about you jr so I may get shit for this one because it's not really a, a writer of words, but more music. John Lennon. I'd like to go back and pick his mind and kind of Warn go back him. to, huh? Warn him. Of Yoko <laughs> or of no, Judy? Of Judy, man. Judy, oh my god. Um, you can see his I, I, I would love to go and just talk to him. Just, I kind of want to see him during the Yoko times because it was such a different from how he was during the boy band era with Beatles and then the drug age but now you got the the peace love and all that stuff I kind of want to mm -hmm. see him during that time okay um, and for me it would be uh, Tolkien um, I yeah. um, the Hobbit was the first book I read not using cliff notes in elementary school um, and I, I read it from cover to cover and then saw the, uh, the, the, the animated movie. And I was just like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I just want to let him know that, you know, his writing really helped me, like, really enjoy books and enjoy the, the stories that can come out of it. Um, and it, it really, again, made me want to read more. So I wanted just to kind of thank him and then just kind of say, how, how did you come up with all of this? I mean, this is just like it's nuts. Yeah, he really started all of that, you know, that fantasy mm -hmm. genre. All right, um, and Maureen, um, you you want to tell us about some things that are coming up? Yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> I'm like, how much can I tell? Um, as so much as you can. Have you signed an NDA for any of this? No. <laughs> well, oh, um, there you go. But, but she like, doesn't want to shoot herself in the foot either. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's, it's fine. Um, I'm just like, oh, can I talk about the stages? But Summer Only We Know, which is my the most recent book I wrote, and I believe in a thing called Love, which is my second book, but probably my most popular, I would say. Um, both have been, um, well, they're sold to Netflix. So they are being written by, so that's Lana on top there and that's Yulene on the bottom, Lana Cho, Yulene King. Um, they are the writers who are gonna adapt my books into screenplays. Actually, they both have already done it. Um, and then Netflix is going to hopefully make and show it. Um, and okay. that actor on the very right there on the bottom is a Korean actor um, named uh, Pyonghan Lee, and he is a huge, I can't not stress this enough, a huge star in Korea. Like I grew up watching him. My mom legit like passed out when I told her this news. Um, so he's, he's, producing, he's producing and hopefully going to star as the dad in this version. Oh, wow. So, um, Come yeah. On, that's that's cool. Cool. I, my, I, I just showed my husband and he's, telling me he's like oh shit and he's say, telling me all this stuff that he's been in because he's, he's, yeah. he's in a lot he's in american movies yeah. too mm -hmm. uh, gi joe he just said 
Yeah, yeah Jamaica, Taylor Sweet Life. Um, the I'm Magnificent sure. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, yeah. The one that Sammy loves. Oh, Sammy loves his own. Okay. Well, yeah, he's he knows who he is. Yeah, and then his big like his big Netflix drama was Mr. Sunshine, um, the K drama. Really great. I highly recommend that to everybody. Um, yeah, pretty cool. So those are the we were finally able to announce both of those things. So I'm really excited. That's awesome. So you're just waiting for a green light, basically, right? Because the um, both both of the scripts are written. But are we waiting for rewrites or yeah, there are many stages. Um, I think each project is different. So, but for my projects, um, we are working with Netflix on the scripts, like they're written and then they have notes. And then there are just a million stages. So it's like in development, both of them are in development. Nice. Yeah, so it's kind of like when people are like, when is it gonna go into production? When is it gonna be out on you know streaming? I'm like, who knows? <laughs> That's awesome. There's a lot. I, I love this. Uh, there's a lot of shows that I watch on on Netflix. They're Korean uh, dramas or coming. So I love it. So I'm ex I'm excited for this. I'm excited for you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah, congratulations, Maureen. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, that, then, that one book was what written in like how many languages? Uh, I believe Seven, in the of like eight or nine, I think. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, except Korean. Uh, what? Like, really? Are you serious? Oh, oh my goodness. Korea is a hard nut to crack. Oh. They do not. They don't just publish every YA novel, and they don't give a crap that I'm Korean. You know, they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if it becomes a movie and it's like does well, then it might. It'll probably get the foreign rights will sell to Korea, but who knows? Who knows? Wow. Maybe well, they'll give it to you after you win your Emmy or something. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Well, and also like with this actor attached now, who knows? Maybe people will be like, "Oh, maybe we should." Oh, that's true. That is that true. jawline mm -hmm. can cut glass, man. Look at that. I know. Uh, <laughs> he's ridiculous. So looking. handsome. So. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Oh yes. So many <laughs> Korean <laughs> men. Like, Your husband is going to excuse me. Hold on. He agrees with me. He agrees with me. So it's okay. We She's just watched dead. Dead. not dead, you know, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, no, he. Hey, it's his fault. I have learned all this because of him. I have watched all so many Korean movies because of him. So, I mean, and you know, he knows Don Lee. It's like one of my crushes because it, it reminds me of my husband. <laughs> so, it's his fault. <laughs> All right, and then this Wednesday we have Silk, right? Yep. Uh, oh, wow. is there, you want to? Is there any spoilers you might want to? Add? Well, am I allowed? Um, <laughs> you're, you're allowed. I mean, <laughs> I mean are I you allowed? Let me say that. Um, they're gonna fight some demon monsters. Okay. Yep. Uh, some old character, some like side characters will have a part in this. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Silk is going to go on a journey emotionally. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> right, so there's some right. revelation in oh. here. So, yes. Okay. There's a beginning, middle, and end. That's a, of some <laughs> sort. And there, there's some great art and dialogue yes, in the middle. Yes, there is a beginning. Yes. <laughs> Silk is in the comic. <laughs> are there webs that are shot? Um, I believe so. <laughs> Fair enough. I, I do have a question. The demon is it? Yeah. Is it also related to Japanese lore? The 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 major demon, the one. Yeah, that was um, it is. It is in the the way that he is designed, but okay. he doesn't. You're not going to get a big story on him because okay. he's kind of just serving a purpose, um, kind of like this bigger threat. He's means to an end, right? Yeah, means to an end. But um, Tak, who is Japanese, he um, you're like design this demon however you want. Maybe use maybe do like a cool Japanese inspired demon, and so he is a type of Japanese demon. Um, I forget the name, but you guys all, you know, there's an emoji for it. It's like the kind of devil face with the horns and the fangs. 
Mm-hmm. That's a specific type of Japanese demon. I, okay. I don't know the name, but um, he is that kind type of demon. Ooh. The way he's designed, yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, and then Maureen, uh, what what what's next? Do you have anything that you'd like that you can talk about that you might I'm have? Annoying. I'm so annoying. <laughs> um, yes, I guess. Um, kind of. It's not going to be satisfying in any way. Um, so I have the silk short coming out. Um, in August, I believe that it's called like Marvel Identity, Marvel Voices. Sorry, I forget what's the name of the actual series and what's the name oh, of this. It's, it's, it's Marvel Voices and it's the uh, a- yeah, Asian, Asian American uh, Asian Pacific yeah. Islander. It's all Asian American. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be like Shang-Chi, you know, uh, Jimmy Woo, um, Kamala, you know, there's like, um, then there is. That's, so that's a comic that's coming out. That's like the most immediate thing. And then obviously Silk, the last issue is coming out next week. And then I am working on a YA novel um, that I just sent to my agent and hopefully I'll be able to talk about it. But at the moment I can't, but I have to tell you that it's got some elements in it that are not my usual straight contemporary stories. So I think that'll be fun. And then um, the other thing I'm working on that I can't, really give details on but i can just say that i'm working on it is um i'm writing a movie for sony picture animation um, Ooh, snap. Yeah, pretty cool. oh god i think i can put two and two together but i don't want to say anything <laughs> no it's yeah. not really it's okay. not related to any of okay. the universe stuff um, oh darn <laughs> it, is, it is the same studio which is cool um <laughs> it's not it's not at all related uh okay. but it is Asian. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, can I say that? And yeah, that is, and uh, it's in development right now with Sony. So we'll see where it goes. Nice. Oh my God. Nice. Can no you way. Wow. <laughs> Trish. She's all Has like, writing a movie always been like one of your goals? Or is that just something that's happening and you're like, yeah. It, it was one of my goals. So kind of like uh-huh. comics um, where it was like, you know, books are kind of my bread and butter and what I love the most probably what I'm best at, at the moment. Um, but I'm always like, okay, I want to try other things, you know, like there's just so, so much cool art out there. And I really love movies. I love TV. I love comics. I love so many different mediums of storytelling. And the more you write, the more you flex, you just become more confident about like your skills. And so I feel like I'm at a point in my career where I feel like, yeah, like I am, down to tackle all these new challenges and I feel really lucky to have the opportunities to do them. You never think you're gonna end up in the director's chair? Ooh. Ooh. Do you want Ooh. to? <laughs> I kind of don't want to. I watched my husband do it and I was like, that is a lot of work. <laughs> um, and you, you know, I am kind of I am a collaborative person. I I am also kind of like a natural manager type person. I used to be a project manager. I kind of like working with a lot of people and finding out what people are good at and putting things together, but it's a lot more fun for me to do the writing instead. So we'll see, never say never, who knows? Maybe something cool will come along where I'm like, I would love to direct that for some reason. Cool, thanks for answering the questions. Very cool, thanks a lot, Maureen. Um, and. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy or Carolyn, um, what do you guys got going on? Monday. Giveaway. Yes. Monday night, 9 Eastern, uh, which I think should be after you guys do the Monday anime show. Um, we'll be doing our 750 subscriber giveaway over on our channel. Nice. Congrats. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. you. Still have time to subscribe? To answer yeah. I know. Yes, yeah, still time to enter. Still time still to subscribe. Monday. Enter, drop the the comment that you need to on the video and all that. So okay. plenty of time. Awesome, awesome. Okay. And then for us over at Team Nerd Herd, uh, we got a couple things coming up. Uh, we have new picks for new comic book day for August the fourth. And you know we're gonna be talking about silk. Um, so we are definitely gonna be talking about silk because you know, it's it's one of our favorite books that we've had, and again, it's uh, Maureen's doing a, an amazing job on that for that character. So we can't wait to see what happens next. 
uh, and then uh, we have Fatime talk. And Jeremy, we may move this uh, just for you uh, for the uh, for that subscriber giveaway. Uh, so this is where we're going to be talking about uh, Record of Ragnarok, which is a Netflix show. Um, it's a great anime, and we're going to wrap it all up for you guys. Um, and we are going to probably we're going to move the time uh, just for our our team nerd herd fam. Uh, so we so stay tuned, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks, man. We we're trying to time it. It looked like thirty minutes every time you guys were doing those. So it's like that might line up right. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll move it for you. We'll move it for you, Jeremy. Don't worry if about it. If we keep on going, we'll have a twenty-four hour, seven day a week channel here soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You and turn to spine ticks? Uh, no, 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 no. no, no and then no. Tuesday at three o'clock, um, I'm going to be debuting the More You Know show with speculating one on one on one. Uh, so this way, it'll kind of help educate the uh, the community and kind of help you guys uh, speculate on books and know what to look for, what questions to ask, what information you may need. Uh, so we're definitely going to be uh, doing that uh, next week, Tuesday at three p.m. And it's very interactive. So if you have any questions and stuff like that, just drop them in the chat. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And again, I'll be walking everybody through it um, so they can be, again, um, be a savvy collector. And then nice. uh, Nick, yeah. do you want to talk about this one? Man, it's it's uh, it's the best show of the week, man. Every Tuesday we talk about the bottom <laughs> half, or as we like to call the, the better <laughs> half, right? So these are the books that... Uh, that the uh, um, cover price ha has marked as books 12 through 21. And usually they are in the top 10 the following week. So get ahead of the game with us at the bottom half. And uh, let's talk some spec and some uh, some books that you should be looking out for. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. And then with that, um, we are done with the show. Um, Maureen, thank you so very much for coming on our show. It was a pleasure to have you. Um, and again, like, yeah, congratulations. I mean, you have so much great stuff coming. Thank you for taking an hour and a half out of your Hawaii time. Oh, yeah, to chat with us. This was yeah. fun. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Enjoy the rest of your time. I will. I'm going to go have a Mai Tai now. <laughs> oh, there you go. Nice. Perfect. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Maureen. All right, Nick, if you would do the pleasure, uh, can oh, you take I us can, out? I can, man. I think I think Lucy's going to have to take us out tonight. Oh. Lucy. Front no, and center. It's Caroline. Front and center. Caroline, yeah. you do it. No. Front and center. Caroline, you do it. Suddenly, <laughs> everyone's mics don't work. <laughs> 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 Caroline, we don't take us out if Lucy's gonna pass it up. Yeah. What's the thing? I need to know what to say. I was the not sure. Pays is if you want to do it right, collect what you like. All right, everyone. If you want to do it right, collect what you like. Woohoo! Bye, everyone. <laughs>